Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of follow-up questions. Uh, Mr. Parker, when you were commenting about uh, permits can be changed on a whim, if I wrote down your comment uh, correctly, uh, effectively what you're saying is, uh, if I correct me if I'm in error, but you're worried that once a rule is put into place, uh, they can also change it. Does that speak to the importance of uh, the Water Rights Protection Act? That, that's absolutely right. In, in fact, one of the big challenges in the uh, Hage case that uh, Mr. Stewart brought up was whether or not the federal government could, in fact, stop access to their water. The federal court in Nevada and the district uh, court of appeals in Washington, D.C., both agreed that there is a right of access to, to those water rights, those livestock water rights. Well, and I, and I appreciate that. And, uh, Mr. Porzak, maybe you'd like to get in on this as well because we've talked about ski areas. Uh, we know the economic importance uh, that, that Mr. Corbin has pointed out, uh, certainly in my district and uh, Mr. Polis's district, too, as a co sponsor of this legislation as well. But uh, you'd spoken to the point that this is far more than just a ski area issue. Uh, you'd mentioned uh, municipal water grazing rights that Mr. Parker can certainly speak to. Mr. Amaday had to step out, uh, but we've heard of water rights being taken by the Forest Service down in the state of Nevada as a condition of permit. Uh, when we're talking about the municipal water uh, that we're dealing with in Colorado, uh, is this a real threat? And again, why do you suppose the federal government, uh, the Forest Service, is trying to pr pursue this taking? It's control over a resource that's indispensable and enormously value, valuable. And uh, that they've made it clear that they want to have the control so that they can decide how that water is allocated and used. Right. And, and, and it's, time is of the essence on this issue to avoid future litigation. So we can settle it once and for all to be able to protect your private property rights. We don't have to worry about rules being rewritten. Uh, to use your quote, going back 20 years, this is not a new issue. It's time that we settle it, and this is a good piece of legislation to be able to accomplish that. That's correct, and that's why we're, we are so supportive of this legislation. Thank you. And, and the point I wanted to add to this is the states do allow, Utah does allow the federal government ownership of water. They just have to go through the same process, any process as anybody else. They have to step up and, and, and show that they're going to put it to beneficial use. They have to apply like anybody else. And if they're taking a water right that belongs to somebody else, they have to pay for it. What in the world's wrong with that? You know, and I believe that's accurate in Colorado as well. Uh, we're just not going to allow the federal government to be able to put themselves in first position at the expense of our ski areas, at the expense of our farm and ranch communities, at the expense of our municipalities. They have to play by the same rules as the rest of us. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your testimony here today. And we do look forward to the Forest Service coming up and trying to express why in the world they believe they have the right to be able to take private property. Thank you, and with that, I yield back, Mr.